So, uh, hi everyone, good evening. Uh, welcome to the webinar on ISERS. Uh, my name is Amit Kini and I am a physics teacher at CFAR and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. I think I'll start by just uh, laying down what the purpose of this webinar is and what are we trying to convey to the students and the parents. So, uh, basically, uh, the, the fact is that engineering colleges like IITs, NITs, etc. These are quite popular. These have gotten more and more popular over the years and they get a lot of press. They are depicted in popular media, movies, uh, movies, TV series and you know Chetan Bhagat books etc. And because uh, over the years people have put this, you know, these colleges on a pedestal and everyone wants to become an IIT. And for a good reason, these are definitely good colleges. So IITs are definitely good colleges for people who want to pursue engineering. But what about people who do not want to pursue engineering? What about all the students who are, uh, for example, passionate about science? So, you would not believe the number of students who come to us and uh, tell us that I'm quite interested in a specific science subject. For example, I'm quite interested in physics and I would like to pursue a career in physics. I'd, I'd like to go ahead and uh, study pure science. But then they believe that there are no opportunities waiting for them. So, this is what they usually say. I would like to pursue pure science, but I am told that there are no opportunities for me in India. There are no good colleges in India that I can go to. This is what they think. Okay? There are no good colleges. And even if I get into a college, when I come out, there are no opportunities. Okay? And in fact, uh, once a student has told me that uh, he wants to pursue science, but he's scared that the colleges are so bad that he's going to lose interest over time. Right? So this is not actually true. This is what the students think, but it is not actually true. As of today, there are plenty of opportunities. There are plenty of colleges that uh, kind of focus on pure science. One of them is obviously IISC. It's not just for pure science. There are engineering courses also there. But IISC is a popular one that everyone knows where people go to study pure science. But some of the less popular, uh, you know, comparatively less popular that are deserving of much more fame are the ICERs. So the, the ICERs are uh, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. Okay. So there are currently seven ICERs in India and these are located in one is ICER Pune in Maharashtra, one is ICER Kolkata in West Bengal, ICER Mohali in, uh, in Punjab and ICER Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh, ICER Trivandrum in Kerala, ICER Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh and ICER Berhampur in Odisha. So there are seven ICERs spread all over the country and uh, these ICERs, they offer high quality education and not only education, they also do high quality research. So these are not just educational institutions, these are research institutions. And what that means is the faculty there, the people who will be guiding the students, who will be actually taking courses, are really scientists. They spend most of their time doing their research and publishing research papers. So these are really good uh, institutes. And this is one venue that students should consider while taking the decision whether they want to pursue science or not. So, we at TFL here believe that every student should uh, make use of their talents and pursue whatever is their passion. And it would be nothing short of a tragedy, I feel, if a student who is interested and who could have become a future scientist doesn't pursue science simply out of misinformation, simply out of lack of information. So, of course, we are not pushing anyone towards science. The student is uh, supposed to choose whatever career path he desires but his decision should be an informed one. So in order to present with, you know, the information about uh, these groups of institutes, uh, that, that is the ICERs, we have amongst us today uh, four speakers, two of whom are currently students who are currently studying in ICERs and two who are ICER alumni. They, they passed out from ICERs. So uh, without further ado, I think I'll just briefly introduce uh, our speakers today. So uh, the first speaker is Omkar Joshi. So he's a KVPY fellow and he's currently in his fifth year of his BSMS degree at ICER Pune. He is originally from Nagpur. He, st he studied uh, his great well from Nagpur. And he is, his interest is in biology and he's currently working in cancer cell biology at the cancer cell biology lab at ICER Pune. Our second speaker is Tejas Sitaram. He's from Mangalore. He studied at uh, KV Panambur and he is actually an ex CFPS student. He's a CFL alumnus. He studied here in 11th and 12th standard. And he is also currently in his fifth and final year of BSMS dual degree program at ICER Pune. His focus is in physics. And he's currently working on precision measurement techniques in gravitational wave physics. 
Our third speaker for the day is Snehal Kadam, and she is an ISER Pune alumnus. She finished her BS MS course from ISER Pune in 2018. She specialized in biology and is currently working as a research assistant at Pune University. She also co-founded a science outreach program for children called Talk to a Scientist. Our uh, final speaker for the day is Ritwik. Also was a student of CFL in class 11 and 12 with CFL alumnus. He also did his BS MS from ISER Pune. He specialized in mathematics. He graduated just this year at 2020 basically and he is currently doing a project in ICTS bank. So uh, in this order first uh, our speakers will uh, give us whatever information is lacking for our students and also they will probably share their experiences at ISER etc and whatever they think is relevant. After the speakers have made their presentation we will hold a question answer session and while the presentation is going on if uh, the listeners have any questions you could uh, send them in the chat. So I hope everyone is familiar with the Zoom because these days everyone has to use this but at the top of your screen you will see a menu that can drop down and there is this chat option there. Right? And if you minim if it's if you are not on full screen you can see it at the bottom there is a chat option. Okay? So you can uh, send your questions by chat and depending on the amount of time we have towards the end we will choose some questions and present it to our speakers. So I hope that is clear. And uh, I think now we can move on with our presentation. So Omkar, I think if, if you could just uh, can you hear? Me? Yes. Ma'am. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you to Amit and Gaurish for putting this together and organizing this webinar. I think we as students of Mansur are always uh, happy to share our information and uh, our experiences with others and also clarify some misconceptions that uh, students and uh, teachers sometimes have. So uh, thanks for organizing this. Uh, before I present uh, my part today, which is about admissions in ISER, I want to state a few points uh, at the onset. Uh, the first is, as uh, Amit pointed out, uh, as a student, you need to be aware of what your interests are and you need to be aware of what opportunities the organization provides you. Take, for example, you might be interested in computer science and uh, you might be interested in uh, protein folding. Now, for such you know, combinations which involve pure science, ISERs are no doubt the best institutes in the country. But if you want to apply your computer science skills in, for example, developing something or robotics, then maybe a technology institute is better suited for you. So the message really is uh, you should be really aware of what opportunities the institute will provide you. And this is regardless of what the rating of the institute. You know, obviously, a good rated institute will have good departments and good professors. But Sometimes, uh, for example, you might be interested in astronomy and so it makes sense to go to an institute which has 8 astronomy professors rather than a better rated institute which has 2 astronomy professors, right? So, uh, all these things are should be taken into consideration when you choose or apply to any institute. Uh, secondly, what I want to say is, uh, uh, Amit, could you shift to the next slide? Thank you. So, before I talk about these exams, uh, I think most of you will know a lot, of, lot about these. And so what I aim to do today is not really give you the facts or the patterns or chapters about these exams. What I aim to give you is a brief overview and then some strategies which I learned through my experience and some tips which I think are really helpful when one starts preparing or starts tackling the questions uh, of such exams, right? So let me get started with that. So life before ISER, right? when you want to pursue ISER as a career, then there are three channels for you to get in and these are basically three exams. They are KVPY, SCB and IITJE. Now I will go into each of them uh, one by one. But before that, uh, it's important to be careful about this last point that ICERs for admission need you to score a certain percentage of marks in 12th standard. Now obviously we are all consumed in preparing for our competitive exams because they are much difficult and they take up a lot of time. Sure, that's all correct. And uh, you know, it makes sense to spend time on those but please make sure that uh, you are cleared your 12th board cutoff properly so that you are eligible it doesn't make sense if you uh, you know ace your competitive exam but you don't score well in your 12th standard then basically you are not eligible so just uh, keep that thought in mind uh, even when you're preparing for all these exams uh, i'll start off with kvpy uh, Amit. yes so 
KVPY is the first channel through which you could uh, get admitted to ICES. KVPY stands for Kishore Vaidyanik Protsahan Yojana. This is a this is a rather prestigious exam. It's also it's also a little difficult uh, considering the time at which it is held and the question which uh, uh, get asked. But uh, overall, uh, it can be attempted thrice: once in eleventh, once in twelfth, and once after twelfth. It's unique in the sense uh, after the aptitude test, which is basically the pen and paper test, uh, one has to face an interview. It is usually the first interview in a student's life, so it's also a, a slightly nervous time. But uh, I think, uh, of course, knowledge is important. But you need to be uh, aware of what skills uh, an interview also demands. Something like you need to carry yourself well, be confident when you speak, and uh, not uh, just you know blab or something. You should know what you're talking about, but that's a sort of different thing. Uh, the other point about KVPY is it's more conceptual and applicative than other exams. So what this really directly points to is you should have a structure in your mind when you go about this exam. What do I mean by structure? Is you should know what sections you are going to attempt. This is especially relevant in the SX and the SB stream, in which in the first part you have a choice of three sections, and in the second part you have a choice of two sections. So in such cases, it's it's really important that you are sort of aware of what sections that you are going to solve. For example, my best subject was biology. So I so in the first section usually it is either physics, chemistry, biology, or physics, chemistry, maths. For me, it was physics, chemistry, biology. In the second section, I knew that I am going to attempt biology, and the second section would be chemistry. Now the second section you could leave it to the exam day when you figure out if the questions are really easy for you or some other section is proving to be easy. But having a structure in mind is important because if you leave everything at the test day, firstly you lose a lot of time in trying to figure out what sections you need to attempt, and secondly. Uh, there's a high chance that you'll commit the accident of uh, actually choosing the wrong section and then losing out marks. So have a structure in mind when you prepare and when you go for the test. You should know what your strengths are and you should go about uh, solving questions according to your strength. Now, if we consider the results. Officially, there are no eligibility ranks that ICER publishes. But considering the past few years, uh, if you if your rank is around 400 in the SA stream and around 800 in the SX stream, you can be confident of getting uh, in uh, in one of the good ICERs, probably or your uh, top priority ICERs. Again, these are unofficial figures. Uh, This is not to say that if your SX rank is say 900 or your SA rank is 500, you should not apply. No, that's definitely not what I'm saying. All I want to say is, uh, if you are firstly, if you are a KPI fellow, you should definitely, definitely apply, regardless of what your rank is. All I want to say here is, these are the sort of average trends that are getting followed for the past one year. And if you really want to be secure about your admission, this is what uh, this is the number that you should be. Aiming at this, uh, what I want to say. So the next exam is the SCB exam, which is which stands for State and Central Board exam. It is also called uh, the ICER Aptitude Test, one and the same thing. Uh, this exam is slightly easier than others in the sense that the questions are a little less difficult, but then that is compensated by the fact that uh, you are expected to solve everything. So uh, there are 15 questions from four sections, and all of them have equal weight. So basically, you need to uh, solve uh, <coughs> solve all of these questions. Now, usually throughout our 11th and 12th journey, we usually get trained for three subjects. It can be PCM or PCB. So the fourth subject really can be a problem. But my suggestion to everyone who's attempting SCB is read a few chapters of the fourth subject as well. I mean, you can talk to friends who are in the respective fields. Like I talked to, like I was a biology student, so I talked to people, friends who were in who were training for JE, and they told me a set of chapters which I could uh, just uh, you know read once and at least know the formula or basic structure. What that will do is that will allow you to attempt seven or eight questions of that fourth section. That gives you that margin because uh, it's it's natural that a few questions will go wrong, and you need that margin, and it will also allow you to get. Around 40 or more than 40 questions correct, which is, which is kind of the number of questions you want if you want uh, your uh, admission to be in your top priority ICER. Because uh, a lot of people are starting to give to give the SCB stream, and the competition is sort of getting fierce. So, if you want to be safe, you need to get around uh, rather more than 40 correct if you really want to be secure with your admissions. The most important point here is. 75% seats get filled via the SCB exam. So, 
if you are not sure about any of the previous exams this is the exam that you should fix upon rather if you are aiming isers this is the sort of exam which you must give unless you are really really confident about your kbpy or your iit jee advance i would say this is the uh, exam that everyone must attempt uh, if you want more information there's a i have listed the website uh, below the slide you can you know visit it and find out more uh, if we could move to the next, uh, the last exam which i don't think i need to say much about is uh, iit je uh, all i would want to tell you is some uh, eligibility ranks which uh, would be useful to know so here there is an official figure given by isers you need to be under 10000 to be eligible to apply but again considering practicality Uh, getting a rank around 7500 will give you that sort of safety but iser pune tends to go a little higher you need to be somewhere around 4000 4500 to be really sure about isers again i mean this is i'm reiterating this but this is not to say that if your rank is 6000 you shouldn't put iser in your top priority these are just some rough numbers that have been uh, seen in the last few years is Yeah, that's the last thing right okay so these are the exams that you give but the next really puzzling and sort of tricky question is is what iser to choose you know all portals will tell you to choose isers uh, in in terms of priority like the, your first priority iser as number 1 and your last priority iser as number 7 now this is a is a tricky decision and it's is rather multifactorial so obviously academics should be the first go to uh, driver of this decision you should see the departments you should see what interests you and uh, how the department of each iser is uh, if you needed you can talk to people in the institute who are studying or who are alumni or even if it's possible for you some professors uh, although that might be uh, not possible for everybody but uh, what kind of professors work there what is the research work going on and what interests you the most should be the primary factors which uh, on which you make these decisions but that said these kind of things also need a look at the non academic factors right? and this may involve location it may involve food climate or other things and uh, i'll be honest with you the sort these kind of external non academic factors in the end influence our efficiency of work and our efficiency of uh, uh, in general studies etc so Yes, academic factors are important, but make sure that these other things are also okay, and there is no major problems, uh, because uh, then they, it it might be a little troublesome if, uh, for example, you don't get suited to the weather or you know other things. So, with academics, do consider these other things also, and if, we, if the other things look okay, uh, academics should be the primary things on which you make the decision. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is, uh, which is given in the next slide, if I may mention, is once you get into ICER and the, there's this one major decision that needs to be taken is choosing a major and choosing courses which drive you towards specialization in one particular subject, right? And this again can get a little tricky, but if you if you keep your mind open and if you think uh, if you know what your uh, preference is, then it should be fairly easy. Uh, ICERs all of them have common coursework for 3 or 4 semesters this is different for different ICERs and what this does is this exposes you to all of the subjects not only physics chemistry math and bio but subjects like humanities and earth science and even some others uh, where for example in Bhopal there are few more subjects as well so what this does is this exposes you to content and material in all of the subjects so that you can completely uh, make a fair choice and understand everything before you make a choice right and it's important during this time to keep an open mind and if you find something interesting explore it you know the best way to explore is probably talk to people talk to professors seniors and peers they are all very supportive people they'll guide you to maybe uh, papers or articles or videos on which you can know more so keep keep your mind open usually we have a preference for example uh, i had a preference for biology i i did keep an open mind but in the end i landed into biology after doing my common course work as well so usually we do have a preference in mind but it's important for us to keep an open mind and explore other things as well finally what this boils down to is what subject you are passionate about and what subject you love because choosing a major at this stage probably means you'll study it for the rest of your iser journey and maybe after that too so you should be able to you know find interest in what you do you should love what you do and uh, otherwise this journey can become a little burdenous so make sure 
make sure that you are uh, following what you really like and not something that uh, that is uh, deemed fancy by other uh, other people right so i think uh, that's it that i have tejas will now take us to uh, life in iser uh, over to tejas hi uh, hello everyone uh, i'm going to start with uh, uh, some slightly unimportant aspects of uh, iser which uh, you which you re- which you can really find everywhere Uh, so I'll start with the sports facilities at Iser. They're they're really good. Uh, recently, they got a new uh, sports complex which includes gymnasium, really huge gymnasium, and uh, also a huge badminton court, a couple of badminton courts, and uh, uh, a basketball court. They, they have all sports facilities that you will find, uh, you know, in other Isers as well because uh, they they got they got them recently. So you may hear narratives that you know you may have heard before the narratives that. uh you know you don't have sports complex or anything like that in iser so that's all good uh this i'm talking about iser pune i'm sure everything i, I i'm sure it's th- that's the case with other isers as well so and uh, i i want to uh, you know briefly mention about canteen as well uh you know uh so iser pune has got a really good uh, dining facility you have uh, two uh, dining complexes which uh, so um uh, any food that you wish they have a menu card you can just go and pick up uh, pick f- food that's really good i haven't found in uh, you know other campuses uh, i've visited so far even abroad so uh, that's that's really nice and uh, the vicinity uh, you know uh, that you know the, the place the vicinity around isa so isa is located in a very happening at, you know uh, place uh, which unlike other isas uh, so that's one that's that's a perk of uh, being a isa pune so you have uh, uh you know so it's it's a very happening place but if you like a calm atmosphere uh then iser pune may not be a place may, may not be the iser that you want to go to because you hear loud marriages happening around uh, the campus and it's really irritating so if you are someone like me who likes a calm peaceful atmosphere then that's not you know very well, uh, but there are other factors uh, you know in iser pune that may leverage this but it depends on what you want to choose later so yeah and then uh, uh, yeah so uh coming to core structure at iser so i'm basically uh, you know focusing on physics uh, uh all my 5 uh, 3 years i've been doing physics uh so i'll touch upon you know for the first uh, at least for the first year you know you get bogged down in uh, uh bogged down doing courses uh, uh you know spanning all uh, fields of sciences you do biology you do humanities you do all uh, you know you, you do earth climate science and all these subjects so I, when i was there it was like for the first two years i think now they made it one year or one and a half years so uh, but you know i'm i'm not sure about uh, other institutes like iits and iiss but uh, uh, in iser they have this humanities uh, courses offered for the first two years which uh, really inculcates uh, you know a uh, good uh, what to say uh, good qualities in you which uh, which you can carry out uh, when as you uh, which which you can carry yourself uh, as you keep going so that that's really nice so the course structure uh, for the first two years although a little daunting because you have all courses uh, it's it's okay but uh, fr- from third year onwards you have to choose your major uh, and uh, so i'll i'll be focusing on physics because that's all i know about so uh, the kind of courses offered in physics uh, at iser pune is uh, uh, much different from what you study in your class 11 and 12 or at least till class class 12 so those courses have to do with uh, you know like for, i'll just give out names uh, uh, so it's like uh, general relativity quantum mechanics uh, classical mechanics and a classical mechanics taught during your third year at iser pune is much different from uh, what classical mechanics you study in class 12 it's totally different i don't think you will find anything uh, similar so it's uh, it's almost pure mathematics so uh, so research uh, so the courses are introduced to you such that uh, you know you're abreast with uh, uh, the uh, current research uh, scenario uh, you know around the world so the way people uh, the way student uh, sorry professors relate to you uh, you know in these aspects are really good so that's not to worry about so uh, uh, teach, teaching is really uh, great at iser at least uh, you know in uh, all it is for physics so and uh, i want to touch upon flexibility of uh, choosing your majors at iser pune so uh, at iser 
I don't know about other Aizel, but Aizel Pune for sure. So, uh, in I I heard from uh, my uh, classmates at CFL. So, uh, one of my classmates he he is doing uh, physics at IIC. So I remember him telling that uh, you don't really have a choice to choose your major. I'm not sure if that that's still the case. uh but uh, you are you are given uh, you know uh, your uh, allotted uh, your major field of study depending on depending on your kvp rank or something like that but that's not the case uh, at iser pune you can choose any uh, field you want any uh, uh, what to say any uh, field of research or any uh, subject uh, you want as it interests you uh, yeah and you know uh, unless it uh, you know unless your grade uh, hampers that i don't know so and uh, and also i want to touch upon uh, you know uh, inter- the prominence of uh, interdisciplinary sciences which uh, you know during your uh, research or uh, you know in in one's uh, you know research career because this is something that's not uh, uh, anybody is introduced to during their uh, undergraduate or high school years so uh, interdisciplinary sciences uh, they con- consist of uh, fields like earth climate science uh, uh data science and all these things so these uh, uh, fields uh, rich fields uh, of research are usually smeared with uh, you know smeared with the name science in your school textbooks so uh, that's what i mean these are really rich uh, fields of research so and iser pune gives you opportunity to uh, you know dis- discover these um, uh, research areas by uh, you know offering you courses uh, you know of uh, courses taught by really uh, great uh, you know professors or researchers uh, uh, some who come uh, some who come from foreign universities uh, you know top universities top global universities so yeah and i want to touch upon uh, uh, the perks of vicinities uh, when it comes to this aspect like uh, coursework or uh, you know say research which i'm going to uh, you know tell you about uh, in the next slide so uh, or for inter- interdisciplinary sciences so there are institutes like uh, iitm i think it's called indian institute of tropical metrology not iit madras and uh, you have uh, one uh, actually i thought <laughs> iit madras is okay so uh, so and then there's uh, ayuka pune uh, which uh, which excels in astronomy which is like uh, which is a globally you know uh, recognized institute and uh, you have uh, uh, pune university is also a good institute which is uh, nearby and there's so many institutes uh, you know in the vicinity of iser pune which gives them a really good advantage uh, compared to other isers so this, i'm focusing on iser pune so uh, you get a really good advantage you you get to build connections that uh, you know others can't do so you get an edge over other you know uh, institutes other isers maybe at least other isers so that's one uh, good thing and uh, yeah i think yeah so we have the next slide so yeah so this is where i want to you know uh, emphasize the most because uh, this is what i want to i want to convey uh, what research is uh, uh, you know what physics research is actually uh, when you you know at institutes like iser pune which uh, which is not really the uh, uh, perspective or the notion that uh, students uh, would have when they are in a in a class 11 12 at least i didn't have that uh, uh, notion so uh, so what's uh, uh so uh during your uh, 11th 12th uh, you study uh, you read uh, books and you uh, study uh, topics in uh, you know uh in your physics textbooks but then when you go to research uh, you have to uh, you, many of you must be knowing so you have to uh, you know usually end up questioning uh, uh, you know uh, established uh, research uh, you know uh, topics or uh, established research uh, literature so that's what uh, you know uh, people usually do uh, quite a daunting task uh, at sometimes so uh, i want to uh, you know briefly mention the kind of research uh, that happens at least at least at iser pune so uh, so to name a few uh, you have uh, uh, on the left upper corner you have uh, uh, atomic physics uh, so I, i i don't know i think it's a very uh, briefly taught in class 11 and 12 textbooks but it's very much different from what you see in your textbooks and uh, you have uh, uh, soft matter physics which i don't think uh, you will know and uh, that's that's okay and uh, you have uh, uh, energy science uh, so iser pune is uh, really uh, famous for its energy science department because of its uh, uh, wide uh, 
established a uh, 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 you know partnership uh, or collaboration with uh, industries uh, not just in india but around the world uh, and you have uh, some some of you were crazy about physics might recognize what's there on the uh, right uh, lower corner so that's uh, the cern uh, hadron collider so there are physicists uh, at iso pune who collaborate uh, uh extensively with the uh, cern and the keep visiting and in the center i want to focus on this because uh, this is my field of research so uh th- that's uh, that's the gravitational waves i don't know if people know but uh, uh two or three years ago uh, nobel prize in physics was uh, uh awarded to uh you know the gravitational wave physics uh, uh people so uh so this is this is one uh, what to say this is one advantage not advantage this is really uh the uh uh, uh what is it uh, this is the current uh uh wait okay, this, this is a really good uh, field of research uh, for uh, uh uh physicists right now um it's uh, it's a it's an expanding uh, uh field of research uh, because of uh, uh, may have the next slide yeah because of the extensive uh, collaboration that that's uh, that happens around the world uh so i want to highlight uh, i am unable to see but i am pretty sure others are able to they, i put a red uh, circle so uh, so i have highlighted uh, you know presence of uh, you know contribution of iser pune iser trivandrum and uh, there's another iser i can't read so uh, in uh, uh, you know ligo scientific collaboration so ligo stands for laser interferometric gravitational waves observation so this is uh, a very uh, prominent uh, uh, field in physics which uh, which is very special to india because uh, there are only uh, two no three detectors around the world two in the us and one in uh, italy and uh, india is getting the fourth detector which uh, means a lot to uh, indian science community uh, as a whole uh, so uh, you see uh, iser pune is also part of uh, another collaboration with the uk so it uh, so we have the next slide so uh, so i want to uh, press on this uh, uh, aspect that uh, you know people uh, students in their class 11 and 12 all they know about uh, physics is uh, you know theoretical physics they are not uh, into at least in my school i studied in kv uh, in mangalore in palambo so at least uh, in my school experimental physics was relegated they, they it was like we we almost never we virtually had no physics uh, experimental physics or lab uh, so all we did was uh, go and sit there so uh, we, it, it's ingrained uh, it's usually ingrained in uh, your head uh, usually in your uh, when you pass through class 11 and 12 that experimental physics is for those who uh, you know uh, those who have failed uh, you know uh, to go to engineering colleges and end up in bsc and they want to do something that's like uh, uh, what to say that's not pure physics because uh, their uh, you know uh, abilities in mathematics aren't that great uh, so they just uh, you know they, they think it's a hodgepodge uh, you know physics background so that's not what it is so uh, this is this this view is very prevalent in india but uh, i think this should i think india is doing a really good job uh, coping up with this which i'll tell you about uh, in the next slide so these are the kind of opportunities you'll see a web diagram there so these are the kind of opportunities that you are uh, that's that's made available to uh, indian students uh, because of as a consequence of a d- new detector coming up uh, so it's coming up in maharashtra so iso pune is uh, again at an advantage so uh so the kind of opportunities uh, that are uh, you know offered or made available are uh, you know you see quantum metrology you see theoretical physics you see experimental physics you see engineering physics and you also see uh, computing which uh, uh, many uh, people from engineering background uh, you know computer science engineering background electronics background uh from engineering institutes like uh, iit bombay iit madras uh, contribute to uh, this field of research so it's quite uh, uh, quite an expanding and uh, far reaching uh, field of uh, research and also uh, here on the upper left corner uh, you know there i have uh, somebody okay the, this is uh, the uk india collaboration where they have mentioned some industries uh, which are uh, 
you know in collaboration with uh, this kind of research uh, kind of research in uh, happening uh, in LIGO atmosphere and yeah so you still have opportunities after you do your research to connect with industries and uh, you know so uh, when I spent uh, some of my time abroad uh, doing my internship uh, I saw uh, this uh, kind of uh, you know uh, attitude where uh, students even after doing their bachelor's uh, or master's uh, in uh, pure sciences they end up uh, getting uh, jobs in industries like uh, laser uh, you know like jobs to do with lasers or uh, you know optics uh, or you know even hardware because they end up you know uh, what to say connecting theoretical physics and experimental physics very well Indian students, as, as far as I know, most of the Indian students, they, you know, grapple with this, uh, uh, you know, even I am currently grappling because I grew up in that uh, atmosphere in Aizar Pune. So it's really hard to connect theoretical physics and experiments. So there's this kind of uh, travesty between uh, Indian, uh, so, so between uh, experimental uh, uh, physics, uh, uh, experimental physics and theoretical physics, which is not really the case. Uh, experimental physics and theoretical physics, they go hand in hand and uh, uh, people in uh, people you know established uh, physicists who win nobel prizes they have uh, you know their specialty they have their uh, you know uh, knowledge uh, uh, abilities skills uh, you know covering both theoretical physics and experimental physics so this is something that uh, india is coping up with which i'll show in the next slide so yeah so recently uh, I, I think India realized this uh, uh, quite late, but uh, it's good. Uh, you know, it's happening now. So uh, recently, uh, as you as you can see, I've uh, this is two of uh, you know th thousands of uh, uh, newspaper articles that uh, you know mention this. So uh, on you know in the February of uh, 2020, uh, in Indian government uh, uh, for, you know invested 8,000 crores. Uh, uh, in quantum technologies so uh, this is uh, you know to outstrip uh, countries like China US uh, who have already established uh, their uh, uh, who have already established uh, their faculty in or scholarship in uh, uh, this field in quantum technologies quantum technology has uh, far-reaching capabilities it it, it, it it can influence it can speed up research in biology in uh, chemistry in physics it can do wonders so india has spent um, an amount which converted to dollars uh, is uh, what to say i think a little more than what the us and uh, china have spent uh, in due course of time as far as i remember so it's going so india is coping up with uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, backlash of uh, you know, not having uh, good experimental faculty uh, during the past years. So, yeah, so so these, uh, obviously, these opportunities and this funding avail uh, so many uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, uh, I want to uh, mention one thing. So, Aiza Pune recently, uh, two of the labs in Aiza Pune were funded uh, 22 crores and, you know, uh, another lab, I don't know how much, 10 crores or something. So for, for this kind of research, so which is really nice. I mean, um, uh, so my professor keeps saying that uh, theoretical physics is a white collar job in uh, Indian science community, which is uh, usually why uh, people, students are repelled from doing uh, pure science because, uh, you know, uh, they want to, uh, they want to do engineering, they want to do stuff and, you know, they just want to go and sit with pen and paper, which is not really the case, uh, you know, at least in physics research, obviously not in biology and chemistry, you're going to do something. Uh, but in physics research, which is not really the, it's not always like Albert Einstein sitting and doing. There are many great physicists uh, who who have done, you know, research uh, tantamount to what Albert Einstein has done. So, which uh, you know, in experimental physics. So these are the, all all the opportunities coming up, uh, and so times are changing. So I think you should also, you know, change your uh, stubborn notion about what pure. Uh, science is. I, I, I think that that's my last slide. I'm not sure. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tejas. Tejas just mentioned um, the Iser canteen and I was like hit by nostalgia and I'm already hungry now. So, um, yeah. So, the next few slides are going to be um, a lot about my journey at Iser and lots of nostalgia. Um, but also about the kind of opportunities you get and why now looking back, now that I've passed out of Iser, 
um i realized why this journey was so important and how it contributed to the kind of exposure i got or the opportunities i've got so just as a background i joined isor in 2013 um i did join via the scb or uh, the aptitude test channel um i was lucky enough that i had um, both maths and biology in my 12th but that said since i saw a lot of questions in the chat you can give the exam com- without having one of the components and you can still do pretty well um we i know tons of people in my batch who got into um i sort without having biology or without having maths in their 11 12th so it's completely fine um you already been told about the course work uh but through your third year onwards at least when i was in iper from my third year onwards i got to pick my own courses and i think this is something that is very very valuable um this is something that makes your course very unique you get to tailor your education according to your interest and i don't think there are any programs in india that let you do that um if you are interested in biology and in maths you can choose courses from both streams and nobody is going to stop you i mean as long as like the class classes are not happening at the exact same time that's the only constraint um you can choose a combination of courses from even more than two streams so it's completely up to you it depends on your interest and what you want to take forward um so this is something that i think is a very very strong point of the course structure at iser um i did end up picking a lot of biology courses because that's where my interest was um but i also did take up a few courses in maths as well as humanities and social sciences um the uh, the next most important thing about iser has been the kind of exposure you get in terms of research and this comes from two parts um the first part is the fact that the people who are teaching you are the people who are actually doing the research so all the faculty who come and take your courses are also the faculty who are running the research lab so everything you learn in your classes is with that background uh, um the person who's teaching you is doing the science every day so they have that perspective which again i think does not come in in a lot of other institutes um that really helps you see the science you learn from a very different point of view um for most courses that are taught at iser um there isn't a defined textbook like you're used to right now in 11 12 you do you don't get a textbook for each course um the portion is whatever is taught in the class so basically that a means you have to attend classes of course um but b that means that everything you're being taught is probably the latest things that are happening in the field so it also gives you an exposure in that sense and the second point is mainly because the course structure at iser allows you as a student also to do research and this is through short semester projects that we can do uh, from our third year onwards so each semester you can choose to work in a research lab uh, you do a project you get marks for it that counts in your grade at the end uh, but apart from the grade you get this whole experience of working in a lab for 4 months uh learning how to do experiments learning how to plan a project and this is something that i think is very unique because it i don't see a lot of students getting this exposure at this um young stage in the third year of your bachelor's or master's degree so that is something that is very important um that is what helped me decide what i like to do what my research interests are um i had the opportunity to do my first project at the end of my second year uh, which was in the summer um we also have a lot of summer internships at iser so that also helps in gaining more experience um then despite all of this the coursework the projects um i think like they just told you about the sports center um and all the amazing facilities we have at iser pune there are tons of student activities that happen on campus the campus is i'm going to say literally never sleeps um because the student community there is very very active um not only in research but in terms of cultural activities in terms of outreach um in terms of sports so i think it really does provide this overall developmental environment for everybody uh but again of course it's up to you uh, what you like to do there is if you like something there's probably a club at iser 
that already exists that doing that's doing it and you can just go and enjoy your hobby activity um so what i did uh, through my journey at ifer was after i did my first two years i picked biology courses then i did a summer internship for 3 months at the national university of singapore uh, i also ended up doing my master's thesis there so at the end of your bsms course so after 4 years in the 5th year everybody has to do a thesis uh, it's a one year long research project and you can do that anywhere in the world as long as you um, get a project so i did mine at the national university of singapore and i passed out in 2018 and again these opportunities that we get to go to different institutes within india or outside india um do come a lot from the fact that we are at ifer because we have professors who have collaborators there so they can help us get in touch with the right people or we have alumni who have been there so it really helps us get access to a network of people that can give us these opportunities so after i passed out from ifer which was in 2018 after getting my bachelor's and master's degree uh, i started working as a research assistant at pune university um i joined dr karishma's lab and she is a new faculty who had just returned from the us and she was setting up her lab so when i joined her i was the first person to join her lab and i basically had the opportunity to set up a lab right from scratch um and this has helped me learn so many things about how to set up a lab how what kind of logistics go behind it um and i think the most important thing that i sir helped me uh, with in regard to this is because of the multidisciplinary approach that exists in iser for research and even otherwise through the student activities you are always doing multiple things um i have become really good at managing my time or multitasking because of the five years that i sir and these are just skills that aren't taught to you through a course but you if you pick them up they can be super useful in your whole life and not only in science um i want to tell you a very brief um idea about the kind of work i'm doing currently uh, just for those of you who are interested specifically in biology just to give you an idea of what the research field is like and what are the opportunities ahead um so my br- broadly i've always been interested in microbiology i think microbiology is something a lot of you may have heard of um it is the study of microbes um one microbe which is devastated our lives recently has been a virus but there are tons of other like bacteria and i have always studied bacteria at iser in all my projects even in singapore in my thesis so my interest has always been in bacteria and the infections they cause so i'm sure all of you had infections all your life and um, many of them have been bacterial infections uh and one of the main things for infections that causes a problem is something called biofilms so biofilms are basically just bacteria but they live in groups they are bacteria that live in groups and what makes them different from bacteria that live individually is the fact that because they are in groups um the infection they cause can be more serious um because they live in groups they cannot be treated very well with antibiotics they become resistant to antibiotics so then it becomes difficult to treat them or uh, to get rid of them and to clear the infection from your body and these can happen everywhere these can happen in wounds these can happen in your gut um all kinds of infections in your lungs biofilms are present everywhere so what we've been doing um at pune university in dr karishma's lab uh, has been studying biofilm infections specifically in skin uh, wounds so this is just a broad idea to let you know that this is the kind of research that is done um this is again very specific to microbiology there are tons of fields in fields in biology and everybody does something different um and i think that is also something that's really great about research that you get to pick what you like and what you do so the most important thing um for through this journey of 2 years after ifer has been the fact that um it's helped me expand into other areas of part i mean not only limited to research of course bio i love doing research and um i particularly do enjoy doing biofilm related work but i also had the opportunity to do things like science communication or science writing and these are also skills that i did in one way or the other pick up somewhere along the way in iser 
and within the last two years i've had the opportunity to expand them so one of the things we've been doing is this series called talk to a scientist which is um a weekly webinar that we do online for kids from the age of 6 to 16 where each week we talk to them about a scientific topic things that are not found in your regular textbook so like i said um there are tons of opportunities after i said but you really need to define your own path you need to figure out what it is you're interested in and it's okay if you don't know right now um that is also something that you should remember i know many people who joined i said thinking that you know they like mathematics and within 3 years they suddenly started doing research in biology it there are tons of people who made this change or flip because um what we think of science when we are in 11 12 is very different from what actual research and science is and i think the two years at icer where you do take multiple courses uh, the first two years really help you understand that they help you see that science was not what you thought of in 11 12 but um that being said if you even after you finish your vsms degree if you do not wish to pursue a phd um there are tons of other career options uh this i think the second most popular career option that people do take up is joining an industry so for all of you that don't know industries do have research and development departments they're called r&ds um and they also do a lot of research but their um approach to research or their methodologies of doing it or the timelines they work on are very different as compared to what you would do if you were doing a phd or you were in academia so industry is also an option there are tons of industries um in india and many more that are recently coming up uh so that is always an option the other option is of course if you have an idea of your own um you can always have your own startup so i have a batchmate um from who passed out with me who now has his own startup um so that is also something you can do there are tons of uh, i'm talking specific to biology but i'm sure there are industries in other fields as well but specifically in biology there are big names that you may have heard of which is biocon or syngene so all of these are also companies um their serum institute which is in pune these are all pharma biotechs that are present in india and they do have a lot of jobs and i think the work that you do at icer pune will definitely make you a good candidate for a lot of these apart from industries if you are interested in science communication science communication is also a field that's quite um that's picked up a lot in india science management science policy or other things so science policy basically involves decisions um at the level of say the government that are taken so there are people who work with say the principal scientific of um principal scientific officer office and they are the ones who take decisions regarding the policies uh, of related to science in our country then there are also jobs in science management this involves managing grants managing research patents um these are also opportunities that exist uh, and i think having a scientific background when going into these kind of jobs always help so your bsms degree at icer will always help in all of these scenarios if you're somebody who really likes writing then science writing editing working for jo- scientific journals are also jobs that are available um another job that is not highlighted enough that i think our country needs the most is science journalism um this is the this is extremely important um and i think in the last 6 months we've realized this even more it is very very important to convey the science that scientists do to the public and science journalism is supposed to be the bridge um that helps do this so this is a field that is very very important so if you're somebody who has interest in journalism um having a scientific background to become a science journalism is very to become a science journalist is very important Uh, of course apart from that there are things uh, there are tons of jobs in education itself if you enjoy teaching um that you can do and if you are somebody who has artistic skills and who really wants to put them to use and make a career out of it um scientific illustration science art are also fields that are upcoming where there are opportunities available so um i think this is my last slide but i just want to end with the fact that i sir is just a place that opens up a lot of opportunities for you um it lays down for, for me it laid down a very strong foundation that has helped me understand what my skills are 
um, and develop them. And I think there are many skills that we pick up just through the way that the course is designed or the way that we are taught that I have seen does not happen at other places. And I can say that now because um, I've moved on to other places. I've gone to different institutes after Riser and I've seen that um, things are not the same everywhere. So Riser does let you learn a lot just because of the way it is structured. And I think it's an amazing opportunity. Um, it gives you tons of exposure, tons of opportunities uh, to take your career forward. Um, but of course, like I said, it is up to you um, how you use it and how you make the most of those support. Uh, so I think the speakers before me have talked about uh, why ICER is a good option. Uh, I would like to tell uh, what you should not expect uh, after joining an ICER. Uh, this is because uh, you should know, I mean, what you're getting into. Yeah. So the first point I would like to tell is that there are no placements. So if you join an engineering institute, typically in your last year, the last two semesters, you have companies that come to the campus and uh, conduct interviews uh, so that you can get a job. Uh, this does not hap happen at, uh, I mean, ISA Pune, definitely it does not. And I would not think that it happens at other, si other ISA also. There's no easy way to get a job, but this is slowly changing. The CDC, that is the Career Development Center, uh, this is becoming more active. So CDC is the main body which uh, helps students uh, get jobs. And ICES are relatively new, so companies uh, have not started coming. This might change in a few years. And uh, yeah, that's the first point. Now, the second point is, uh, if you want a career in academia, that is, you would want to end up as a professor uh, teaching and doing research side by side uh, so this can take a lot of time so uh, yeah so uh, yeah a career in academia that is uh, suppose you want to be a professor at IIC or uh, one of the ICS say then it's a it's a long process see you will take five years to complete your BSMS then if you do you will have to do a PhD that's gonna take another five years and then you might have to do two postdocs so that will take another four or five years but uh, i mean these positions are funded as in when you are doing a phd uh, you are getting paid when you are doing a postdoc you are getting paid but uh, you will have to constantly move around and uh, there is no uh, i would say uh, there's no job security as such it will take some time for you to settle down so if you are if your priority in life is like you want to settle down have a family then a uh, career in academia specifically theoretical physics and math so if you're very sure about this i said might not be a good option because uh, the first three semesters you have to do other courses like uh, yeah humanities biology but uh, i mean i think there would be very few of you who would i mean who are very sure about what you want to do like snail said People join ISA thinking they want to do physics, they want to do math, but even my some of my friends have switched from physics to biology. So I would say uh, to still join ISA, uh, the, the, the first two years uh, or now, now it's three semesters at ISA Pune that you do all the courses uh, gives you a very strong uh, background in like all the major fields, biochemistry, physics and math. And personally, I feel uh, that the future of science is going to be uh, inter interdisciplinary research. You might you might start out in physics, but uh, I feel that uh, as you progress in your career, if you want to make an impact, you will have to uh, look at applications to bio. And you have a lot of such courses in uh, ISA Pune at least. You have biophysics, you have biochem, biostats. So if if you really want to be, uh, I would say, a new age scientist, you will have to work across fields and ICERs are probably one of the best places you can be because they, they really encourage you to take uh, uh, courses from variety of uh, disciplines. Yeah, so I mean, these are the, I think, three main points that I want to tell. Uh, if, you could, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, now I'll talk a bit about mathematics. So, I mean, the mathematics we do 
in uh, yeah in school and what you do at the research level are i mean they are very different so research mathematics uh, there are broadly two fields one is pure math and applied math i have drawn like two disjoint uh, circles but uh, there is an overlap uh, so pure math is very abstract uh, i mean yeah i don't know how to maybe in the next slide i'll tell you what is what's abstract uh, you work with structures and foundations so some of the words that you come across when you study pure math are things like groups uh, topology and categories applied math will be a sort of heavy machinery of what you already know like calculus uh, differential equations but a bit more complex and a uh, bit more uh, yeah powerful i would say to use it for uh, complicated problems so applied math is more computational it has wide uh, applications uh, fluid dynamics and uh, physics yeah and uh, yeah engineering uses a lot of applied math uh, so yeah probability differential equations stats these are the things uh, you study in applied math and uh, i have just given uh, different ices have different strengths so this is according to the department so if you know i mean if you are say suppo- uh, interested in number theory then i said pune has uh, the strongest number theory department all sizes kolkata is very good for applied math they have very good stats department they do stats differential equations mohali is more algebra based and uh, bhopal is balanced i mean that's not important i think because most of you won't be knowing uh, which one you want to do but yeah i have just given that yeah so this uh, maybe i'll just give you a glimpse of what research math is like so uh, uh yeah the first question so why is 1 plus 1 2 i mean you always you take it for granted that 1 plus 1 is 2 i mean is it always true can 1 plus 1 be 0 say in some system so i mean the picture that i have given there is a hint so that so that's like a program with computer screen those are ones and zeros so you know that in binary when you work in the binary system 1 plus 1 is uh, zero so this 1 plus 1 2 is equal to 2 is not a god given fact i mean it could be zero and then the next question why is 2 times 3 6 this is also something that you think is uh, i mean yeah it's like the truth or something but uh, suppose you're working in uh, z mod 6 bit so that is you're working with uh, remainders that numbers live when divided by 6 in that system 2 times 3 uh, is actually zero so i mean what why 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 are we working with the real numbers and not with some system like this why or what is so fundamental about r so that is a question that you will find out the answer to if you study higher math then uh, so that is what you study in say uh, analysis that is a field called analysis the first question the second question is the how do you do calculus on a sphere so calculus is uh how you calculate uh, say the area of a complicated figure so if i give you a graph and i draw your car uh, give you a complicated figure you use calculus to calculate area the rate of change but now suppose i give you an object on the sphere i give you a sphere and i draw a square on the sphere and i ask you to calculate the area how will you calculate it i mean so uh see we are on the top of a sphere right but it almost looks flat so there is some way to identify uh if you take a really small uh, small section of sphere you can treat it as a plane but what exactly is this identification and how do you take calculus from the plane to the sphere so these are the questions uh, that you answer in geometry uh the last question is again a little bit of analysis maybe just to uh, excite you so what is a number i would i will i may i won't give you the answer to this maybe i'll just leave it at that so i mean whole numbers make sense right 1 2 3 i mean you you can count it so okay it's fine zero also a little bit of thinking uh, okay you have nothing so that zero negative numbers uh, continuing along the same le- logic if you don't have something you can treat it as uh, minus minus 5 minus 6 depth and then fractions fractions are when you divide stuff so from whole numbers you have somehow uh, come to rational numbers 
P by Q, where P and Q are whole numbers. Now, how do you go from this to the real numbers? I mean, why does why does this even make sense? Why do real numbers make sense? Why 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 are like if I tell you that uh, uh, cube root of two, I'll tell you is a number. Like, why do you believe me? Could you draw it on a line? If I tell you square root of two, you can draw it. I mean, it's the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle with sides one and one. If I but if I tell you cube root of two. it's not so easy to draw it on the number line so if you can't draw a number on the number line like you can't measure it and give it to me how do you know it's real like i'll just tell yeah this is a number you have to believe me right so how so this is what is called rigorous how do you go from rationals to the reals why don't we stop at the rationals why are reals more fundamental than the rationals so and other, so what beyond the reals so th- that's the square root of negative root of minus 1 so those who you have uh, some of you might have seen it it's called i some some guy just came and told yeah i i is a number i mean you just believe me and you just believe it so that is what you want to make these things concrete and give proofs uh, why these things make sense i mean it's just not something that uh, simply you're making up i mean these things are uh, very real in some sense and yeah so higher math is making these structures more defined uh, yeah this making it more rigorous so yeah that's what higher math is i mean just a glimpse i think yeah that's it i think this is the last slide no i think i think this is the last slide yeah uh So one question I think is addressed towards you, Ritwik. Uh, yeah. So you talked about applied and uh, pure, applied and theoretical pure math. Yeah. The question is, uh, how does one choose what they want? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I mean, ideally, you should do what you like. I mean, you should try both the fields. Take courses on. Uh, I mean, you'll have courses from pure mathematics and uh, applied math. you take both the courses see what you like but uh, if you want like a good job i mean applied math is a i mean very good course uh, you can get a really good job uh, yeah if you are looking for a job i would say applied math if you want to make an impact i mean even if you want to if you want to be a scientist and you want to make uh, impact uh, i think uh, applied math is a very good choice because it has a wide wide range of applications Yeah, pure math is something that you do uh, just because you like it. I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, there are uh, it can have applications, but uh, not in the near future. You might have applications after maybe 150, 200 years. So uh, you might not see uh, the impact in pure mathematics happening immediately. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I think that was a fair answer. And uh, one more question that I'm getting a lot, and I've been going back and forth whether to put this forward or not. Uh, I think everyone is asking this: is uh, how does we, we have talked about ISER? How does ISER compare to IIS? Is there any distinct advantage? I mean, I don't know. If you think it is not fair comparison, then we will just. <laughs> I mean, we are all from ISER Pune, so and, it's yeah, going yeah. to be like a biased answer where we're going to say, "No, of course, ISER is amazing." <laughs> um yeah. but i think the core structure is is the different um at yeah. iisr versus at iisc yeah and i think also maybe just the i don't know if iisc has a five year integrated degree i'm not sure yeah i think iisc uh, you can uh, leave after four years with a bs degree so that option is not there at iisr pune yeah. and uh, i think like if you if you really don't know what you want to do i think iser is the best option because at iisc uh, students tend to take like the traditional subject chemistry or bio or physics or math but at iser pune you really have this uh, going across fields that does that does not happen a lot at iisc i would think and uh, i mean if you are looking uh, i mean post iser or post iisc phd positions uh right now iisc definitely has i mean better uh a better record i mean the universities that the students go to from iisc uh on an average is better than iser like iser has definitely good placement 
some of the students have gone to Harvard. Uh, I know a couple who have gone to Oxford. But uh, I mean, at IIC, the number tends to be bigger. Uh, but this will change. ICER is uh, really new, and uh, I mean, yeah, you can join ICER, do really well, go to these institutes. I mean, that's the main advantage I think IIC has over ICER. that it's well established and it's well known over the world yeah. icers are relatively new but yeah see since see i would tell at ice pune i was at iisc uh, for one year doing my master's thesis there <laughs> so they don't have uh, i mean lan cables in their hostel i mean that is really i don't know sad i guess i mean at uh, iisc pune every room you get a lan cable that is an internet connection but there you don't get so you have to go all the way to your department If you want internet connection, the institute's internet connection, I think that is a yeah. I think I think I sir benefits from the fact that it's new. Um, yeah. Because the of hostels the are new. The, yeah, all yeah. the facilities are new. Yeah, that's true. So I think uh, I think there is just one more question that I'm going to just drop off the mat. Uh, so there is one question: Is there? A BS course alone, without the integrated BS MS at any of the ICs, can you just do a BS and do an MSc elsewhere? Uh, I think maybe Omkar can answer this. You couldn't do it before, but I think now there has been some change. Okay. Uh, but I am not familiar with it. There has been a change. Uh, I think this has been integrated in ICs and Bhopal. Uh, they can now exit after a. Uh, they can have a BS exit basically now, but uh, ICs in Pune. Uh, I'm not sure if they have uh, officially started this as of now. They are they are beginning to change the structure. Uh, they have reduced the common course from four to three. So, uh, and this is something which is actively being discussed. So, this should happen in the near future. That's yeah. So, I mean, uh, probably uh, the eleventh. Yeah, you just uh, so students who are interested, no, just go to the website and there will be a course book that tells you about what structure is the latest one. So you can just check it out, because uh, in my year it wasn't there. You just had to get a PSMS. But I think uh, there might be a change. You can exit with a BS degree, I think. No, but I'm not sure. Okay. So I guess uh, that, that is we have covered most of the questions that have been asked. And uh, yeah, I think we will stop with this. And uh, this was a really wonderful, very informative, and very inspiring talk by all of you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule and doing this for us. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And I'm sure uh, students also benefited uh, from it. Uh, and uh, before we close, I would just like to say that uh, at VFL we train students for pure sciences in addition to our uh, you know training for JE etc. And we take pride in this. We take classes separately for preparation for KBPY uh, and. Uh, So uh, the preparation for KVPY is slightly different in the first year as compared to other uh, exams, and uh, we make that clear and we take classes separately for that. And uh, you could just look, uh, if you just go to the website, you you just see more details, and you can contact us if you have any more questions about KVPY at at, for, at this number double nine double zero five two zero two three three. I'll just write it in the chat. And you could contact us, and all our questions will, all your questions will be answered. The number is double nine double zero five two zero two three. So I think with this we will uh, end the session. Thank you, thanks a lot for everyone for all the students who are here, and thanks I for having us. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having us. Okay, bye. Bye. Take care.